Hi, I'm back with another episode of Ask Me Anything and I can't wait to get going so let's dive on in with the first question. Jessica asked me, will there be a book for Knight? He appeared in the Eternal Mate series as Graves' brother and I'm obsessed with him. Well Jessica, that's a very timely question and yes there is a book for Knight. Uh, it's actually going to be released in June this year and it's called Bewitched by a Vampire in which Knight and Lillian's story is finally revealed. Now, I've all, I've been waiting to write Knight's book for quite a while now, but other books kind of had to be dealt with first, and as much as I really wanted to just to write it, I had to wait, which is really, really painful for me to wait, because I love Knight. Knight is one of my favourite characters in the series. Um, he's very growly on the exterior, much like his brother, but on the inside he's quite the big softy. Um, so it would be nice to see a Van der Gaard with a bit more heart. So yeah, his book comes out in uh, June, on June the 14th, I believe. I check my calendar, but I don't have my glasses on. Um, and it's all about how he and Lillian came to be together and, like you said, he appeared in Graves' book, which was Haunted by the King of Death, and that was book 11 in the Eternal Mate series. Um, and in that book, you kind of got to see this kind of tentative, budding romance between Knight and Lillian, and kind of, we, we missed a lot of it because obviously Grave went to hell, and spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Um, so we kind of just saw Knight when he was first crushing on Lillian, and then Knight when he was madly in love with Lillian. Um, and then the couple reappear again in Scorched by Darkness, where Knight makes a very dramatic kind of scene, and Lillian helps with that. Knight's book uh, comes out in June, June 14th I believe, I could be wrong, um, but sometime in June anyway, and I can't wait for you guys to read it because I've been itching to write Knight's book for so long now and I'm so happy that it's finally coming out. When planning your books, how do you know the chapters when characters from other stories run into each other? Well, Bridget, that's a fantastic question. Um, to be honest, it's quite tricky sometimes to remember all the places where characters have appeared in other books, um, especially when you're talking about a series as large as the Eternal Mate series, um, even sometimes in the Guardians of Hades series, because they're quite plot heavy, so quite often you'll have characters that will pop up in various books and the cast of characters is like enormous too so that doesn't really help. Um, what happens normally when it comes to trying to remember where a character has appeared in previous books, especially say um, a character like Knight or Vale in my Eternal Mate series, but let's take Knight, for example. He's appeared in several books, whether mentioned by name or he got like a little sneaky cameo. I'd like to insert him here and there and see how many people notice him popping up. Um, so what happens is, I when I go to plot his book, um, for example, then I would go through all the other Eternal Mates books and Obviously, when it comes to a name like Knight, it's quite hard to search for him. Um, but I do my best, and I try to remember where he's popped up, and, and then I end up reading those scenes, and seeing if those scenes fit into the book that I'm like writing for him. Um, so, for example, with Knight, um, I know that he appeared in his brother's book, uh, Graves book which was haunted by the King of Death so I went through that book and I plucked out all the scenes where Knight was in it and so I kind of collected them all and I did the same um, with kind of books like Seduced by Demon King where he kind of pops up as a cameo in that 
and I like to read them all and then it kind of refreshes my memory and then I can decide whether those scenes were, are going to be shown from his point of view or somebody else's point of view, like the heroines, in his book and end up kind of working them into the story, um, which is always fun when you then come across that particular chapter when you're writing the book because you get to reference like loads of stuff that you've already written so you just kind of have to kind of shuffle things around to be from his point of view instead which is always uh, quite fun. Those chapters get written quite quickly it's uh, always a joy to write those ones. Um, but it comes kind of in terms of plotting a book where I kind of want characters to appear as well. I mean I like to thread in lots of characters in the Eternal Mate series kind of into other books whether like I said whether that's like a sneaky cameo or whether I'm kind of doing it and naming them um for example Vale and Rosalind pop up all the time because they're my favorite couple um and I love Vale and but it's always kind of fun to try and look at a book and kind of decide how many characters from the kind of series need to kind of pop up in it. I mean, I do like to have, I have quite a big cast of characters in the Italian Mate series, so it's always quite fun to kind of thread some in through the books and kind of figure out, you know, who I can include in this book and kind of, you know, who I can bring into it from previous books and like the guys from Underworld for example or the elves or the demon kings, the dragons, it's like you know I like to see who I can kind of bring into the book um, which in itself causes its own problems because then I have to kind of figure out where they are in their personal timeline and versus where this book fits in its timeline kind of like like in the timeline of the series um so it's quite difficult it's not easy to kind of plot some of these books but it is quite fun i like the challenge so yeah i mean it's often quite complicated um i don't tend to keep a list i'm really bad at that uh i just kind of have to go off memory of where these characters may have appeared in other books and bring them in from there stephanie asked are there going to be more Guardians of Hades books? Will we ever see more of the brothers and how they're doing? Or are their stories completely over and finished with now? Well, Stephanie, that's a great question. Um, we have two more books to come in the Guardians of Hades series. That's Hades in December, no, October 2022. And following that we have Persephone in December 2022. Now Hades will wrap up the series and the storyline that's been happening throughout the last eight books um, and then Persephone is going to be the origin story of Hades and Persephone in My Guardians of Hades World so that's all about how they got together and it's like a retelling of their myth um, but with my versions of those characters. Uh, as for will I be writing more in that sort of world, um, I'm not writing more for the brothers or the Hades characters um, in a sense. I'm going to be bringing them into um, the next series that I'm setting in the same world which is the Guardians of Poseidon. Um, I haven't started writing that yet, I'm still in the planning stages, but I can tell you that the Hades sons will be popping up in the Poseidon series, so you can watch for them there. Tracy asked, what's your favourite drink? It has to be tea, I love tea. Tea, tea, tea. I love tea. Um, I blame my mum for this because I think we started, I mean, we were stealing bits of her tea since, like, from when we were knee high to a grasshopper. Um, and I just love tea. It's comforting. It's just, oh, it's good for the soul. 
I mean, I know I'm British and we love our tea, but I love my tea. Um, if it wasn't tea, I mean, I, I do drink coffee too, you know. I have a love affair with coffee and hot chocolate, it's fine. But I'm, I'm true to tea. Um, in terms of soft drink, uh, Cherry Coke Zero is my crack. Um, I don't have it very often. I just love it. I just, it's like, oh, I know I shouldn't, but I do. I love Cherry Coke Zero, and that's why I try and moderate myself so I don't have it all the time in the house. Otherwise, I'd just be drinking it like 24 7. It's not good for me. Um, uh, in terms of alcohol, which I know Tracy was curious about, um, I. I like a good rosé wine. Give me a good rosé wine. It has to be like a white Zinfandel or uh, even a Prosecco or a Cava. Um, if we're talking like aperitifs or cocktails then I absolutely love Aperol Spritz. Oh my god. We discovered Aperol Spritz in Verona. We'd gone to the little market square and it was heading towards evening and it was kind of, everything was packing up and it was beautiful sunset over the, like, elegant Italian buildings of uh, Romeo and Juliet's town. And we were sitting there having a drink and we kept noticing people were drinking this orange drink in wine glasses with ice and orange in it. And we were just like, what is this they're drinking? We need to know. So we asked the lovely bartender and he supplied it, it was spritz. So we ordered two and then we were hooked. I mean, I can't really describe the taste of Aperol spritz, but it's kind of unique. It's, it's like herby and bitter and sweet and it's just, oh, it goes so well on a hot day. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, I can wax lyrical for days about Aperol Spritz. I love a good summer evening in my garden with a glass of Aperol Spritz. And every time I go to Italy, I have to have Aperol Spritz all the time. Um, and then there's a drink we discovered in Canada. Ah, oh, yeah, uh, Frosé. Who, who knew about this? What's Frosé? I mean, frozen rosé, hello. Um, it was a very hot day. I had... We had cycled around Stanley Park. I had fallen off my bike in a very embarrassing fashion in front of many nice Canadians who did not deserve me to lash out like some angry bear. Um, I don't, I don't take it well when I feel really embarrassed and it tends to kind of come out badly. Um, I'm a good human being really. I fell really badly on my elbow and it hurt so bad. And it was such a hot day and it was our last day and we were gonna to go to the airport soon and we went for lunch at this little place on the harbour that was sort of just below our hotel and they were serving this thing called Frosé and oh, I just need to know what it was. It was like, it's rosé with vodka with some elderflower and some, oh my God. And we had it and oh, it's so delicious. It takes so long. I make it at home sometimes. It takes so long to make it, but it is so worth it. Oh, and strawberries, lots of strawberries, which is great because I like to grow strawberries in my garden and I always end up with about 50 pounds of strawberries and nothing to do with them. So I freeze them and I make froze. So yeah, so tea, tea is number one. Uh, cherry Coke Zero, I'm addicted to that. Um, any white Zinfandel or mm, Grenache at a push. Um, Aperol Spritz. Yummy and Frosé. Frosé when I am really in the mood to actually put in the time to uh, make a cocktail. I hope that answers your question. If you have any questions you'd like me to answer in a future episode of Ask Me Anything then drop them in the comments below or head on over to my Facebook fan club group where you can connect with other readers like you and with me.